Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create mobile walkthroughs with Divi's slider module. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to create a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to pages, click on add new. I'm gonna give this page a name. I'm just gonna call this mobile walkthroughs and then I'm gonna click on use Divi Builder. Build from scratch. So over here, we, we're going to need a single column. So I might as well go ahead and select it and then close this. Now, the next stage is to come over here to our section and add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to this gear icon. And this is going to take me to my section settings. Click on design, spacing. So let's start with the top padding. And for the desktop, this needs to be set to 4VW. And this needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and click this chain so that the values are added both to the top and the bottom. Next, I'm gonna click here on this uh, little icon here so I can add my values for my tablet and smartphone. So over here on the tablet, this is going to be set to 5VW. Activate the chain. And on the phone, we're going to set this to 3VW. So again, I'm just going to reduce this to 3VW, activate the chain. So that's all I need to do for the top and bottom. Next, we need to add the um, left and right padding. So over here, we're going to set this to 30VW. Again, as we did before, activate the chain. And then we need to come over here to the tablet. And on the tablet, this is going to be 18VW. Activate the chain so it's applied to both sides. And then finally, it's going to be the phone. All right, so I've added my settings here for uh, the padding. Now, the next thing we need to do is to add a new row. In fact, I'm gonna save this first. So over here, we've added our row already. So the next stage now is to go into the row settings and add a gradient. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon and I can go now to background, click the second tab, and click this plus button. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's add our first color. So I'm gonna click here on my first color and paste the color in here. On the second color, this needs to be full transparency. So what I need to do is to select white, okay? Make sure it's white and then drag the slider all the way down to the bottom. So that will give you full transparency. Next, um, we're going to change our gradient type here from linear to radial because this is what's going to give us the style that we're gonna go with. So we need sort of like a semicircle for our design. Okay, now I know right now we can't see it because we're using a very light gray. All right, so um, over here on the radial direction, it needs to be set to um, radial. And on the direction, it needs to be set to top. Next, we're going to set our start and end position, and this is both going to be 40%. Okay, make sure it's 40%. <laughs> right, so let's go ahead now and uh, um, adjust our sizing. So I'm gonna click here on design, click on sizing. Now we want this to be full width. So I'm gonna drag this all the way down to 100%, and then I'm also gonna do here 100% on the max width as well. Next, we're going to come over here to our gutter width. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So by default, it comes in at three, but we want this set to one because we don't want any spaces between uh, the, the columns. Right, so the next stage now is to add a bit of padding to the bottom. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to spacing and go to bottom padding, set this to 30 pixels. So this is just a little bit of space so that our design is not too close to the edge. Right, so the next stage now is to go to the border settings. So what we want to do here is to add some rounded corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 20 pixels here. And because this chain is activated, my rounded corners are going to be added on all four sides. Next, let's add a box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow, choose the first option here. And now you can see the, um, the rounded corners now showing up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to first add a blur strength because right now this is a bit too harsh. So we're gonna come over here, set this to 80 pixels, and then we're going to also add a color. Now this color we're going to add is very subtle. So let's come over here to our shadow color. Click on this um, eyedropper tool and paste the value between the brackets. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so now that we've um, done all this, let's go ahead and save and add our first slider. So we're gonna click this plus button and add our slider module. So I'm gonna search for it. So I'm just gonna type the first few letters and then this is gonna narrow down and show me my sliders. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this. So 
by default, it comes in with this background color. Now, we don't want that. So let's first of all, get rid of that color. So I'm going to come over here to background, and then I am going to add a color which has full transparency. So I'm going to drag the slider all the way down to the bottom, just like that. And make sure the color is white as well. So as you can see, I've removed the color of that slider. Now let's head over to our text settings and make sure that uh, we have the right settings for our text. So first of all, we, we need to make sure that our text orientation is set to centered because we want our slider to have everything right here in the center. Next, we're gonna come over here to text shadow. I'm gonna choose this option here, the very first one, and then we're gonna add a shadow color. So we're gonna come over here, click on this eyedropper tool, and I'm gonna paste my values between the brackets, just like that. Now it's time to add our text sizes. So let's start with the body text. So I'm gonna scroll down here, go to body text. So first of all, the size needs to be set to 0.6 VW. And while we're on this, uh, on this uh, body text size, we might as well go in and add the sizes for our different screen sizes. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon, click on the tablet, and on the tablet, we're gonna set this to 1.5 VW. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it in here. And on the phone, this is going to be 2.4 VW. Now I know we can't see uh, what's happening on the screen there, but um, this will be revealed soon once we have our backgrounds showing, okay? So back over here to the desktop, the next thing we need to do is to add our body line height. So by default, it's set to 1.7, this needs to be 2.2. So this just adds a bit of space between our letters so that it's easier to read. All right, so now that we have this, the next stage now is to add a bit of a spacing on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna scroll down here to spacing and add our top and bottom padding. Now, because this is the same, we're going to activate the change. So now it's applied both to the top and the bottom. So this just adds a bit of breathing space for our text. Right, so the next stage now is to come over here to the advanced tab because we need to add some custom CSS for our button. So I'm gonna come over here to slide button and paste my CSS. Now this CSS code, uh, as I mentioned, is in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now that we've added all our settings, the next stage now is to remove these active sliders. So once we remove these sliders, we can now go in and add our own design to the slides that we need because all this doesn't have all the stuff that we need in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And then we're gonna click this plus button to add our new slider. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna remove this uh, the headline here. And then for the text, I'm just gonna call this learn more, right? And then over here, we just, we're just going to need a title. So let's give this a heading three. So I'm gonna highlight the text, click here and set it to heading three. And now the next stage is to add some sort of image. So I'm gonna press enter to just give this a bit of space. Now this next stage, I'm gonna add some images which can be found uh, in the um, post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now on that post, it'll also tell you which layout pack it is that these images were from. In fact, it's the illustrator's layout pack. And again, this is free, so you can go ahead and download it and use these images. Now, I've already added all my images in the media library, as you can see, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this. Now, the reason why this image, this image works is because it is a PNG image and it has a transparent background. So as you can see, as I add it around it, it's very uh, clean, it doesn't have any background colors. So this is why this is going to work for us. All right, so now that I've added my image, the next stage is to make sure that you add a link to your button. So I'm gonna come over here to the link. And uh, right now I'm just gonna add a blank link. But in your case, you wanna make sure that you add the link, which will link to whatever page it is that you want to link to. So this is very important. Otherwise, the slider does not serve any purpose. All right, so now that we have the link in place, the next stage now is to add our gradient background. So I'm gonna come over here to background, click on the second tab, click this plus button, and we're gonna add our first color. Okay, so I'm gonna paste it in here. And then the next color is going to be a transparent uh, color. So I'm gonna click here on the second color, drag the slider all the way down like that and then make sure that this is set to white, okay? So that is full transparency. But we're not done yet because we want a design which um, almost matches what we had in the beginning. So on the gradient type here, we need to set this to radial, and then 
making sure that this is set to the top, just like how we did it before. And then the start and end position needs to be set to 30%. Okay, great. Now we can see our design is taking shape. And now we have those two semicircles right there on the top. Now let's go to the design tab. And uh, because here we need to make a few adjustments to the navigation. So the arrows, custom color, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click here on navigation. So on the arrow custom color, I'm going to paste my color in here. And then on the dot nav color, we're going to add black to that. So I'll show you what these two are. So I'm going to click here on the dot nav color, make sure that this is set to black. So you will see these once I add more slides into this design. Uh, the next stage is to come over here to text. So as you can see right now, we can't see the text in here. That is because it's light on a light background. So we need to come over here and change this to dark. So now we can see the text is, the text is now easier to read. Great. So now that we've set our text to dark, let's make some uh, some more custom uh, customizations to our button. All right. So to do that, uh, let's start with our text color. In fact, we need to come over here to the button, right? Make sure that you click on use custom styles for button. Now this gives you the ability to go in and make changes to your button. So let's start with uh, the text color. So I'm going to come over here, making sure I paste to white as my color. I know it's disappeared, but uh, this is going to reappear once I add my uh, button background color. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button and paste my color in here for my background. And now you can see the button has appeared. All right. So now the border width, we're going to set this to zero. So I'm just going to drag this all the way to zero. And then for the button border radius, we can set this to 10. But of course, if you don't prefer to have the rounded corners, you know, it's all up to you. Uh, but uh, for this design, we're going to set this to 10. And then we're going to come back over here to the slides. So now we can clone these and um, have as many slides as we want. So I'm just going to add two more slides here. Okay, now you see those three dots there? That's what we customized earlier on. And these arrows there also have a specific color. So in your case, if you want to change these colors to match your branding, you can always go ahead and do that. All right, so now the final thing is to now go in into these specific slides and change the contents of that slider. Okay, so to do that, all we have to do is to click here on this gear icon. And then for this image here, we can just delete that, add a different image. Uh, so let's go with this one select that. Oh, you can see here. And again, uh, because this is transparent, this is fantastic because it maintains the design that we have here in the background. And then of course, you want to make sure that your link here points to the right place. So again, I'm just going to use a dummy link for this. And then we're going to go back, click here on this gear icon, and we're going to get rid of this image Add a different one by clicking on add media. This time I'm going to go with this one here, select. So the other thing that you can also do here is to change these colors so that each slider has a different color. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can come over here to background and then all we need to do is to change the first color. So I'm going to add this color here. Now, if you want to change the colors of uh, this semicircle here and the button, you can always um, add your color in here. So right now I've just gone to the background gradient, <clears throat> clicked on the first color here. So I'm going to paste the color like that and then uh, to match this color here with our button, we can go to design button and then this is the color that you want to change. So I'm going to click in here and paste my color like that. So now you can see on the slider, this color here now matches with my button color. So this is the time where you can go in and make sure that your colors for your buttons uh, match your design. All right, so pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm going to save this and then save one more time. And then I'm going to save this page and exit the Visual Builder. So now we need to test and see if our slider works. So I'm going to click here on Exit Visual Builder. So as you can see here, when I add my mouse on this area, these are my arrows. So I can go in and this will cycle through my slider. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.